Hello, handstander, and welcome back to the How to Do a Handstand Foundation Series here on YouTube. My name's Kyle, I'm a handstand coach, and as always, if you like today's video, uh, leave your comments below so you and I can chat. Uh, subscribe to the channel so that, of course, you can get notified uh, when I upload other cool handstand videos. And as always, head on over to kyleweeger.com if you're interested in full-length handstand courses. So today's video is all about the legs. So we have worked on hand placement, what to do with the shoulders, how to make a hollow body, how to get your hips over uh, your hands and now we're going to work on an actual entry into handstand um, and for the series or for the purpose of this series for the foundation series we're going to work on the single leg kick it is undoubtedly the most common entry for beginner students you get one foot on the ground and one leg lifted pretty good place to start and then you get to use a little bit of a hop to see if we can get again hips over shoulders and then heels over hips for that long clean line so since today we're going to be putting a little bit of weight onto uh, our hands when we jump upside down let's get into the wrist and just do a little bit of warm-up here so you guys know this from the video uh, um, all about your hands index fingers forward or wrist creases forward whatever your particular cue is but get the hands underneath your shoulders and then rock shoulders past the wrist just a little bit so pretty light warm-up we're not going to spend a ton of time uh, today is all about the physics the math equation if you will on how to get your hips above your shoulders and then drag your foot your trailing leg up to meet your kicking leg and then voila handstands happen all right turn your fingers out 90 degrees so uh, your thumbs are now facing forward and just rock a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right and then start to make circles counterclockwise with your chest so your chest goes up to 12 o'clock down to nine six three twelve you get the idea right that's two revolutions, and at the top of your third, the next time you hit 12 o'clock, yep, yep, same, same, go the other way. So clockwise rotations, what you're doing here is trying to put pressure into the different parts of the hand and different parts of the wrist and feel it in a few different places. Last one up to the top, easy breezy, okay. Turn your fingers 90 more degrees this time. Your thumbs are facing outward and your fingers are facing your knees, simple enough, right? Stay right here. Um, if also, just for life type stuff, if you're on a keyboard or a typewriter or a you know, cell phone, lo and behold, uh, for a good chunk of your day and you use your hands in that position, this little stretch is um, a must-have in your repertoire of moves. All right, come on out. Now, I'll show you palmar flexion, one of my favorite ways to stretch the backside of the wrist. You can do this two hands at a time or one hand at a time. The one hand at a time version looks like this. You're going to flip your palm face up like so. Turn the eye of the elbow forward and then lean back a little bit. So everybody wears this one a little bit differently. And then you would very simply just switch. Put your left hand down, flip your right one under, or vice versa if that's how you started. And then find a little bit of therapy on the back side of your wrist. Over a long enough timeline, what happens is you develop some strength back there and then you put both hands down. Um, note to self, don't do this at home if you have not done this drill before, but here's just a picture of where you can go with wrist um, strength and flexibility is uh, palmar planks. They look like this. Uh, they're not the most comfortable thing in the world, but they are uh, very, very functional. Go ahead, knees down, roll on out. Okay, let's stretch out the shoulders. We'll come into uh, Anahatasana, one of my favorites, puppy dog pose, just stretch out like so. We're not going to use the folding chair today quite yet. Just go into a normal puppy dog pose, inhale, lift up, get a little space. Here we go, and exhale, just drop your chest. We got five more. Inhale, up, and then exhale, drop. That's one. Easy. Two, follow along, press into the hands to lift up. Here comes three, four, and five, and hold. Big breath in, mm, open mouth, exhale, nice, crawl your hands back, 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 and then one other good one for the shoulder that I like to do uh, a lot is to uh, go into what's called chest expansion, so everything from the upper pec to the front part, uh, your anterior deltoid right here. So grab your hands behind your back and interlace all 10 fingers to the webbing looks like that. Draw that single fist all the way to the ground. Lift your chest up. Look up at the ceiling. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, so we're going to go 
uh, get our hollow body and our hips into it right away uh, with our hollow rock drills just to warm up the belly, and then we're going to get on our hands for a little while. So uh, join me for a set of 10 hollow rocks, and then we'll start to work on the physics of the kick. Here we go. You know this shape. Rock back, rock forward. This is not a sit-up. You already watched the hollow video uh, and, and the hips video, so we know that hollow rocks look like this. That's one. Join me here. Two. Keep your shape. Three. Easy. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. Here we go. Wonderful. Okay. Now, before we kick up, I want to talk a little bit of um, the handstand theory uh, with you so you have better ways to think about it rather than just uh, sort of blindly throwing your legs up. I uh, see students that do that. They're like, watch my handstand. I'm like, well, think about where you're going first, okay? Um, I know in yoga you hear a lot of like, you know, clear your mind, don't think about anything. Mm, not for me. Uh, not in the handstand, at least. I want to think about my mechanics. Like, what am I doing to make this pose happen or to make this position happen in my body. So um, think about the number four. Just let's say handstand can be represented by the number four. How many different ways can you get to the number four? You can do addition, two plus two. You can go subtraction, 10 minus six. Multiplication, uh, two times two. You can do division, 444 divided by 111. You can take the cube root of 64. You could take the square root of 16 and so on. There's a million more examples. You could do calculus. You bring that into the equation if you wanted. Some of these are pretty simple ways to get to four. Some involve a little more work and are more complex and aren't things you would do in third grade versus freshman year of high school, right? So that said, there's a lot of ways, a lot of ways to get into handstand. Today, we're going to focus on the one uh, most common beginner entry because it's easiest to wrap your head around. Later on, there's things like straddle, piking up, uh, zombie press, which is a fun thing. Go Google that. Um, so there's all kinds of ways to get to it. And which one is the best? The one that you're going to practice the most is the best one. Um, and that's just how that goes. For example, in my practice, when I first started, single leg kicks all day up to the wall, anywhere I could do it, freestanding and fall over. And then now, here I am, you know, years into my practice, I have like a s relationship with uh, kind of this half frog to straddle jump where my legs are out and then I get to use the little inertia to go out and then tomorrow my favorite entry might be something different. So for where you're at right now, just know that um, over time you're going to try on a lot of different entries to handstand. You're going to find a lot of ways to the number four, right? And then you get to kind of pick and choose, but the important thing is to be open to all of them. So uh, that said, let's start handstanding. Okay, handstanders, so a couple of things about the single leg kick uh, before we go into it. I want you to follow a, a couple key things that will make all the difference. I have seen this drill work absolute wonders for beginner handstand students who are laying that foundation, and they do these uh, smaller things correctly, and then all of a sudden, handstands. I've also seen this drill discourage people because they weren't doing these little things, and the things are as follows. So I want you to imagine that when your leg leaves the ground, it doesn't just go dead weight, right? So both legs are going to remain straight at all times other than that, that initial uh, bend that happens when you kick up. So this leg is straight, this knee is bent, obviously. What I want to happen when this leg comes off the ground is that it also goes straight. What happens if it doesn't and it just kind of goes lazy is you get this weird kind of dragging leg where um, the muscles aren't active and it's not as easy to move into place. When you move a straight leg, think of like it just lifts behind you. The other cue here, lift from the inside of the foot, the heel on the inside. Think of dragging your foot up and then also uh, whenever your feet leave the ground, pointed toes, always, 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 no reason um, not to do that. The other thing I want you to think about is force. So to jump, that requires muscular force to propel yourself in the air, and then you're asking the proposition of your body to stop yourself in the middle of the air when you're in a vertical stack. It's a lot to think about, I know. The best analogy I've ever heard um, in w for the, the trailing leg is put this way. How do you park a car, right? You don't drive your car into the garage at 80 miles an hour. You slow down, you get off the freeway, you exit, your, your car slows down, now you're in the city, you get to your neighborhood going even slower, little speed bump, school zone, you pull into your driveway, now you're moving at f you know 
10 to 5 miles an hour, and then pretty soon, 3, 2, 1, you shoo, glide into your garage. It's not all the way in. Think of your back leg as the same uh, analogy as that car. You want to kick up with the top leg, put it in position, and then let your trailing leg, your drag leg, park like in a garage into the place uh, of vertical alignment. So it looks a little bit like this. Watch the first couple, we'll talk about them. And then of course, it's time to practice, baby. So hands down, we know that, we know the position. Shoulders over wrists. Let's start there, hug in through the low belly. And then when you kick, you're, the idea is that you're building as much of the handstand already on the ground before your legs get in the air. So you have just less pieces of the puzzle to put in place. It's a good way to be, I promise. So hands down. This leg, my right leg, is going to kick, point, drag the heel. This leg, my left leg, is going to straighten and join it up at the top. Three, two, one. Park it. Okay? Now I'm going to press, get tall, do all the shoulder drills, get as straight over a line as I you know, possibly can, and then two straight legs coming down and out. Now, if this is your first time doing a handstand workout uh, or series of workouts, Hitting the line is probably not where you're at, and that's okay. What we're going for is hang time. One way to um, get more hang time is to work on this particular drill with inside the family of the single leg kick. It's called a switch kick. Now, if you don't get all the way up and lock in that line, your drill today might look like this. Kick two straight legs, same. Switch on the way down, okay? So I'm kicking getting both legs straight, and eventually over time, you kick a little higher, a little higher, a little higher, and then your switches happen up at the top of your handstand rather than at the ground. So I want 10 solid reps, and we're going to take a break. We'll do a few, take a break, and come back up, and then you can do this video as many times as you need. It is a good uh, warm-up, good entry into your handstand foundation practice. Hands down, two straight legs. Here we go. Kick, up, meet. Ooh, there we go, come right back, down, okay? Now, we have two sides, right? <laughs> uh, my buddy out here, uh, one of my yoga teacher friends says, you know, you got two sides. You have a good side and a second best side. No, there's no, but don't use the term, oh, it's my bad side. Um, I know that's kind of the thing. Um, my right leg kicking is my second best side uh, for the record. So mine looks a little different on this side, but I do my best, of course. So kick up, straight leg, straight leg, meet it. There it is. Yeah, it took me just a little longer to find it. Okay, come on down, come out, and I am going to go right up again. Rep number three, three, two, one. Handstand's half in there. Perfect. Come on down. Rep number four, hands down, lift, two straight legs, up to meet it. Three, two, one. Again, if you're not holding for a three count, nice stacked handstand, that's what this course is for. That's exactly why you're here, putting in the reps. If you do the right reps properly and you do them frequently enough, guess what? You get there faster. You practice your handstand uh, once a week at the beach or at your buddy's barbecue or whatever and you kick up against a tree after having a couple beers, probably not the best reps, right? So how serious are you about your handstand? If you're willing to put in the work, which I think you are because you're here right now, that's a better way to be. All right, Kyle, enough talking. Here we go. That's four in the books. Rep number five. Drag it. Find it. Three, two, one. Down, come out. Halfway home. Big breath in. <sighs> breath out. All right, so the second best side coming up. Lift the leg. Press and stand. Come here, just trying to park that car, baby. Six. Six handstands. Done. Now, uh, reps seven and eight, if you are doing uh, more of the switch kick and you're just like, hey, I'm not a handstand yet, man, um, might look like this, right? Let's do a couple of these. So hands down, two straight legs, switch, land softly. I will tell you this, rep number seven in the books, just to mentally mark it off there, I don't care how high you kick, the more important thing is how softly can you set your feet down. Um, a thing to consider, good example, I won't count these next two reps, but here's um, uh, A versus B. I would rather have this here, soft set down, than someone who just like throws it, okay, boom, and then they totally 
let go of their handstand. The same muscles that control you getting up and getting the two legs lined up are the same muscles that set you down. So move with purpose, move on purpose, even when you're coming out of the handstand. Okay, so we ended number seven. Number eight means I'm on my second best side, my right foot. Hand down. Hand, well, hands. We'll work on one arms later. Lift your left foot, and then here we go. Drag it, park it. There it is. Find your handstand. Hips over shoulders over wrists. Last three. Two, get taller, baby. Three, one. All right. So mine have a little adjustment, right? You get up, hips, okay, find it. Toes, find it. I usually turn my right foot in a little bit, get that extra point, just an extra inch of lift. Constant refinement. Handstand is a very movement-based shape. Eventually, you get the static, right, where you can just hold super solid, but you have to move into that in some way. Here we go. Reps nine and ten coming at you live. Big breath in. Big breath out. And by the way, as you can probably tell, I like uh, taking breaths in between my reps. I would rather practice good reps over and over than just, I could have done 10 reps already probably five minutes ago, um, but then those reps like seven, eight, nine, and 10, are they really that good? So practice once again with purpose on purpose. Here we go. Rep number nine, hands down, shoulders over, lift, two straight legs, park it. There it is. Three, get taller, two, and one. Come down, softly set it down, gearing up for the last one, let's make it the best one. Take a big breath in. All right, hand center, you got this. Even if it's just a switch kick today, if you're just working on getting one foot off the ground at the time, make this, oh, lost my mic there, make this your best rep of the day, meaning get the most hang time. If it's a switch kick, just stay up for that extra second. If it's getting the hips over uh, your shoulders and getting them in line, stay up for that extra second. Make it count. Here we go. Second best side. Three, two, one. Drag it into place. There it is. Hold five. Easy. Four. Three. Longer. Two. And one. Whoo! All right. Well, that'll get your heart rate up again. Uh, hand standing is not only fun and like cool to do for the sake of getting the skill. It's also a good way to get in shape, by the way. <laughs> so uh, strong shoulders, strong chest, tight abdominal wall. All right, my friends, that is it for the fifth video of our How to Do a Handstand Foundation series. As always, subscribe to this channel. Leave your comments below if you have any questions. Of course, I'll be posting more and more handstand videos to so make sure um, you stay notified on those. If you want full-length handstand courses, head on over uh, to kyleweger.com and pick those up. As always, it's my privilege, my honor uh, to practice and to train with you. Be easy. Thank <laughs> you.